What's up, movie fans, and welcome back to another episode of Curtis Review. You'll notice if you've watched any of my videos up to this point that I'm going full voiceover for this episode. It doesn't mean I won't be back on camera, but at some point between this episode and my last, I got stuck in the void and I'm not sure when I'll get out. It's a Christmas stinker. Today we're going to discuss May December, the newest movie from director Todd Haynes. As is the usual, my girlfriend was firing this up and I was like, Hello! Hey! Listen! I want to watch too. So we sat down over the course of a few sessions and watched what is one of the most uncomfortable movie experiences I've had in recent years. May December is the story of Gracie, Julianne Moore, and Joe, Charles Melton, and their controversial relationship that started when Joe was just 13 years old. Gracie was 36. Yikes. It's also about Elizabeth, played by Natalie Portman, an actor who shows up to study and ultimately disrupt Gracie and Joe's lives as she is starring in an upcoming film adaptation of their life story. What I found most challenging at first was the tone. The first 30 minutes or so were baffling as I grasped at straws to figure out what the movie was trying to say or ultimately would say. The aha moment when everything clicked was so satisfying, like being let in on the inside joke that you've been pretending you didn't care about for years. I love inside jokes. Love to be a part of one someday. Once you get to that point, the film carries on effortlessly with the viewer unable to take their eyes off the screen. Like exactly what it's like to unabashedly read a sex scandal story or the biopic of a serial killer. Satisfying and also revolting, satiating an even sicker urge. Natalie Portman's power as an actor was on full display here. I've always found her to be stunning and riveting, but in this role, she was fierce and frankly, a little terrifying. There's a few moments where you can't help but chuckle and even laugh out loud at the lengths Elizabeth is willing to go to to be able to understand Gracie's motives. The line between fiction and non is blurry, and you begin to wonder where Elizabeth ends and Gracie begins. Portman commands the viewer to watch her like no one else. That's not to say Julianne Moore isn't front and center here too. Her overgrown child persona, evened out with a lisp that makes her seem even more infantile, makes her so creepy. Some of the best sequences of the movies are the quietest, where Portman and Moore gaze at each other, into the mirror, and through them, Todd Haynes pokes through the camera lens and is winking. The mirror scenes are so effective in this way because they make you feel like a lot of tabloid sensationalist stories do. Should I really be watching this? And what good is it to be watching it? And also, why does it feel so seductive? There's a really interesting line to be towed for a filmmaker tackling this kind of subject matter because you don't want to glamorize or further sensationalize the material because there's a reason it's controversial. The plot is referential to a real life person, Mary Kay Letourneau. It never feels like the movie is in bad taste, even though Gracie and her story will leave a rotten feeling as the movie goes along. While Elizabeth in the beginning gives the impression that she's an actor who takes her work seriously and has good intentions with Gracie and Joe, well, that facade fades pretty darn quickly. There's a hunger in her eyes that is frightening and Partman exudes that terror masterfully. Never does she lose the poise and posturing of the actor, but in what could be one of the weirdest and most uncomfortable scenes in a movie I've seen in my life thus far, she manages to out cringe the most cringy moments of Curb Your Enthusiasm. You are popcorn? I ate my popcorn. Yes, I am. Are you worried she's going to eat your popcorn? Are you crazy? I'm what? really uncomfortable with this. I'm really, this about? is my wife. As I'm wont to do after watching a movie that confuses me a bit, I did some Googling and noticed that May December is considered a comedy and is being nominated as such. This was surprising to me, even when I did laugh at various scenes in the movie. The more I ponder the movie and its themes and ideas, its existence as a comedy makes sense. Thus, Haynes is having great fun here with an excellent script by Sammy Birch. Being that it's the holiday season, I did a rewatch of It's a Wonderful Life, and I was reminded of the technique used in older films of using matte paintings and sound stages to expand and breathe life into movie sets. Given Todd Haynes' other film, Carol, and its penchant for melodrama and weird tonal shifts, especially noting that Todd Haynes has a thing for 1950s psychodramas, the eerie, unsettling score by Marcelo Zarvos emphasizes that here in May-December. I wonder if the comedy of May-December would have hit different if the movie was filmed differently. Imagining a version of this movie filmed on a soundstage is interesting to say the least, but a lot of the power of its message is actually elevated by its backdrop. The cinematography, as briefly referred to with the mirror scene previously, is breathtaking. Though the movie is set in Savannah, Georgia, it feels like a place that exists outside of the reality of even this movie. There's a quality that in Gracie and Joe's life, time stands still and their history and family exist in a vacuum. This is an implicit effect that Haynes manifests so well. The matte paintings aren't necessarily needed. The text of the movie is so rich, you can taste the Savannah air. The time stands still quality is best portrayed in Charles Melton's performance of Joe. It's hard to fathom that a 36-year-old woman could even have the thought that forming a relationship with a 12-year-old is a rational thing. It's sickening to even think about. But to Gracie and Joe, they've wrapped themselves up in their narratives and Gracie's gaslighting that it all feels so convincing. 
There are moments where you can't believe that they are living in the world with a family seemingly normal. That is not the case, and the emotions, or lack thereof, Melton exhibits are heartbreaking. There's a scene where he smokes weed for the first time with his son. That is one of the best in the movie, and Melton really brought his A-game. Joe feels so large in a body and space he's been forced to inhabit in such a small way. It's terrifying. The town and the town's people often move along on the outskirts of the movie, drifting in and out of Gracie and Joe's disturbing life together. Elizabeth is indicative of the outside, the foreign, the tabloid glazed eyes of a movie executive hungry for a story and even hungrier for power, ego, and glory. Todd Haynes is aware of how off-putting and manipulative these characters will be perceived, but the beauty of the scenery and the excellent performances breathe life into these troubling characters. It's a reminder that outside the walls of our house and the TV frame of our Netflix, there are people like Gracie and Joe living amongst us in the world and when we hear about them, we can't peel our eyes off them. Melodrama was mentioned once, but this film is a tragedy through and through. It will not feel good to think about after you finish. It persists with you because the film itself is masterful at walking a particular kind of tightrope, and Haynes' ability to weave that all together into something that is unbelievable and unforgettable is astonishing. The lies that we as human are capable of telling in order to perpetuate and carry out awful and traumatic things is horrifying. And to Todd Haynes and co, it's the perfect opportunity to hold the microscope up to us as we watch Elizabeth chew up every second of Gracie's makeup routine. Also, has there ever been a more dramatic movie moment about running out of hot dogs? You tell me. In conclusion, May December may not be for everyone, but it is a dark comedy that will leave you with plenty to think about. Toting excellent performances from Porton, Moore, and Charles Melton, and a handful of others. There's a lot of great acting on display here, as well as incredible directing from Todd Haynes. This movie is definitely worth your time. Just make sure you buttress it with something that will make you feel good afterwards, like a pleasant cooking blog or the beautiful Gretely starring Past Lives, which I happened to watch after May December, but prior to writing the script, and man, Past Lives fucking slaps. Movie of the year contender for sure. So what did you think? Did you like May December or is it just not for you? If not, do you have a favorite Todd Haynes movie and why is it Carol? Leave all your thoughts and comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this to show up in your pipeline. Until next time, I'm going to go throw up because this movie truly makes me feel sick, but in the best way. Peace.